This is the Go Maluku podcast. So what's what's on the menu today? Um, this is Indi Kulipi Chari from the uh, Kuna General Congress from from um, from Latin America. Um, so today we'll be talking about uh, well four things. First of all, the essentials of finance participation, where we're going to talk about. Um, second is like the role of the indigenous coordinating body um, that is tasked with facilitating uh, this process. Um, third is a, to have a close look at the expert mechanism proposals. So as you probably know, the expert mechanism on the rights of Indigenous peoples um, concluded its, um, its session um, two weeks ago and had a agenda item dedicated to the NS participation process. And then um, at, afterwards, um, some, some reflections slash Q&A, um, some, some dialogue would, would be great um, to, yeah, to, to venture into that. As you probably know, is that um, what, what we talked about is like the new status for these peoples. Um, so when we mentioned NS participation, uh, imagine a new status for, uh, for indigenous peoples. So let me, let me kick off with the essentials of an ass participation. Um, in the photo that you see over here is the current Haudenosaunee Descahe. Um, as you probably know, in 1923, uh, the League of Nations, the Descahe uh, of the Haudenosaunee Levi General um, traveled to, to Geneva to address the League of Nations, but he was not allowed to, uh, to enter the League of Nations. Um, as with him, as um, several other indigenous peoples uh, from around the world, including from the Pacific, um, Ratana as well, and some other people uh, also traveled to, to the League of Nations to address their issues at the highest political level uh, globally. Um, but for sake of this conversation, um, I'm going to zoom in at the, um, of the, the Haudenosaunee Descahe. Uh, particularly because this year was the 100 year anniversary of the Descahe um, traveling to Geneva to address the League of Nations. Um, the, so you could properly say that the, one, the enhanced participation process is a 100 year process. This is a photo of, um, of the Descahe Levi general uh, with, um, yeah, with the mayor of, of Geneva and some other dignitaries as well, um, as he was only received by the, the, the mayor of Geneva and not by the League of Nations. Um, so, and these journeys from these indigenous peoples from um, uh, particular Haudenosaunee as well as Ratana as well, uh, that sparked the international indigenous peoples movement um, towards recognition of rights and also uh, for participation at the global stage. So, when we talk about an as participation, this is not a process that just that just emerged the last decade or so. Um, this is actually a process that's been ongoing for quite a while. Um, so that it's safe to say that it, this is a 100 year process. So going back to the current Descahe, Steve Jacob, Jacobs, um, he addressed the print forum at the very beginning um, at the opening session. And one of his, um, yeah, his final words were that the Haudenosaunee will not, or the Sky, the Haudenosaunee will not address the United Nations until it has been recognized as a government. This to emphasize um, one of the main uh, pain points of indigenous peoples when they uh, go into the United Nations, that they are not able to participate in their um, in their capacity as self-governing uh, indigenous peoples, um, but having to go through this modality called a non-government organization or having to establish a non-government organization to be able to participate um, in the work of the UN. Obviously, there's um, the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples and the form on indigenous issues has participation modalities um, that allow Indigenous peoples to participate in their own capacities as Indigenous peoples, which is called Indigenous Peoples Organizations. However, that, that is only limited to the EMERP and the current forum. If you go outside of these two um, bodies um, and you go venture into the wider uh, UN system, um, it is pretty impossible for Indigenous peoples to be able to 
to participate in their own, own capacity as self um, as peoples representing peoples. So this is um, um, these were the final words of um, uh, of the Descahe, the current Descahe. Descahe is a is not a name; it's a title. Um, Steve Jacobs at the Emirates session this year, which concluded a couple of weeks ago. So that is um, if, to, important to note. Um, what what we're talking about is that we need people to wanting to participate in 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 their own capacity. Obviously, from the Pacific, Pacific perspective, is is um, is uh, is super important to yeah as, as a point of departure when we engage into this and in, in, in as participation process. So these are two Pacific representatives that went to the November um, went to the November workshop. Um, organized by the Office of High Commission on Human Rights on NS participation here in Geneva. Um, um, one is from Aotearoa and one is from, from Luku as well. So we think about why it is important for these peoples to um, yeah, seek NS participation. Obviously, one is that is claiming our space, um, um, that it's getting your own microphone, getting your own space at the United Nations. Um, and ensuring that when we speak as peoples, as representative of Beninese peoples, that the world will listen. Um, standing tall is, is another one um, that with a status, we're not just another voice in the crowd, um, but actually that we're on stage, spotlight on and leading the show, or at least participating in the show. And the third one is legacy building. Um, as this is not a one and done deal, and this is actually about setting up a stage for our next generations. Um, so when they step up, they are starting on a high note. They are starting on the shoulders of those that have gone before us and they're not going to start from scratch. Um, so those, these are like, this is why um, an expectation would be important for these people of the Pacific. So possible protagonists of this, of this status would, for, for, for example, be the Great Council of Chiefs from, from Fiji and or the Malva de Maori from, from Vanuatu, uh, its um, Council of Chiefs. And obviously, around the Pacific, um, there are many more entities, uh, representative institutions that represent peoples from the various peop um, uh, yeah, islands and, and, and nations as well. But this is just as an, as an example that, that there could be the possible protagonists of um, yeah, for this for this particular status. What are we talking about? If we zoom in, um, this is a new and distinct and high level status for representative institution of Indigenous peoples at the United Nations General Assembly and the Human Rights Council. That is what this particular status is about. This will not do away with the current participation modalities of Indigenous peoples. Like I said, um, and these people are able to participate to MRIP and perform as in these people's organizations, that will remain. This particular status is particularly focused for in these people's representative institutions. So who is it for then that you might ask? So if you look at the, um, the ALTA outcome document, which, which was prepared um, for the World Conference, which was held in 2014, um, the particularly theme to paragraph 10, it has two elements in there. So the second element is called, says that we call for at a minimum permanent observer status within the UN system, enabling our direct participation through our own governments and parliaments. Our own governments include inter alia our traditional councils and authorities. So when you talk about representative institutions, this is what, and at least from the indigenous coordinating bodies uh, perspective, this is what we mean with representative institutions. We refer to ALTA outcome document theme two paragraph 10. So why this? Back to ALTA outcome document paragraph 10, um, at the first element, it clearly highlights that the pursuant to the universal application of the right of self-determination for all peoples, recommends that the UN recognize and these peoples and nations based on our original free existence, inner sovereignty, and the right of self-determination in international law. So that is why uh, the enhanced participation process is, is, is necessary. To put it more into perspective is that um, if you're not at the table, you're on a menu or you're serving the menu. That is what we, um, what has been said, for example, by um, the Haudenosaunee 
uh, faith keeper or alliance chief or alliance he said said it's several times if you're not at the table you're on the menu but particularly for the pacific region um we're dealing with um at least three well well three major issues one is obviously climate change so why now why is NS participation important to do um to do it now with the um, with the climate crisis and in these peoples being at the forefront in these peoples having the um, yeah the, the knowledge and the capacity to uh, to to fight climate change it is very important that in these people through the representative institutions engage at the highest possible level at the decision making level in their own capacity directly so that is why it's super important that that uh, that enhanced participation is going to be um, yeah going to be followed up on, um, particularly now. The loss of biodiversity is, 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 an, is another one. Um, and in addition to that, it is the, um, yeah, the, the status of the biodiversity of our oceans, um, of the high seas, for example. Um, last March, the, uh, a new treaty was, uh, was negotiated and finalized, and it was actually ratified um, quite recently. As the biodiversity of the high seas or um, biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction. Um, there were several strong references to the rights of Indigenous peoples, references to the Indigenous peoples' knowledge. Um, and now it is very important when they are going to like going to operationalizing um, this, this, this treaty and into the institutional arrangements that Indigenous peoples can participate. Um, fully as self-governing peoples within, um, within the structure. Plastic pollution is the same thing. Um, you, we recently had the plastic treaty negotiations in Paris. Um, little to no participation of any peoples possible because people, these peoples had to go through NGOs. And there was a limitation of um, NGO participation, like one per, per organization. This would be different uh, potentially be different if Indigenous peoples um, had this particular status, so that we could participate directly into the into the into the work of um, into the work of these three negotiations. Well, there's one caveat, obviously, is that the General Assembly and it, um, cannot instruct conventions in terms of their rules of procedures. Uh, but this is just to um, to highlight that this is very important um, that. The the nice participation process happen, is happening under the General Assembly um, uh, context as well as the Human Rights Council context, but also that we're looking into the various conventions, um, the environmental conventions as well, um, and these COPs, COPs of parties, as potential contexts where these NS participation should be also be manifested in. To be able to facilitate all this entire process, um, there were the indigenous coordinating body was was established. the The origin story of the indigenous coordinating body is in Quito, Ecuador. In two thousand twenty, indigenous peoples um, from um, yeah were invited from seven social cultural regions. Unfortunately, only six uh, regions were able to participate because Africa was not able to participate because of visa issues. And they gathered in Quito to, uh, in the second dialogue, um, informal dialogue on NS participation. And in Quito, um, the, the discussion was, how do we proceed um, following up on, um, you know, upon the process that, that, that was uh, from 2014 onwards, the meeting was organized by the, the summer parliament of Finland the International Indian Treaty Council, COICA, which is a, um, a uh, the, um, organization of Indian peoples in the Amazon basin, and AIPP, the Asian Indian Peoples Pact. And one of the elements of the of segments of the outcome document was the formation of an Indian coordinating body. Um, it was a, um, a wish of the, of the participants to, to form an Indian coordinating body to ensure that the NS participation process is facilitated and for consultation and coordination amongst the Indigenous peoples, um, um, cross-regional and within the regions in with regard to the national participation process. This is like a quick outline of its responsibilities. First of all, it's like keep theme two paragraph 10 in front of mind. 
enable informed decisions, uh, facilitate Indigenous cooperation, um, organize meetings, promote Indigenous views, and more importantly, lobby um, in Geneva, New York, and Capital, and, in, and coordinate with UN entities such as the UN Prime Forum, uh, the Voluntary Fund, um, the Expert Mechanism, um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it also to be able to do all this work, it also needs to do uh, some fundraising as well um, for um, the operational activities of, of the ICB. So in short, these are um, the current members of the ICB so from, from, all, uh, from all seven social cultural regions, you might recognize a few. Um, so moving forward is that uh, in terms of dance participation process, they, um, the word says it itself is process, which needs to be established by UN resolution. So you have the M expert mechanism, which concluded its, um, its session like two weeks ago, um, provided some proposals in terms of the um, in terms of the participation process. Um, to give you an overview, so that we uh, so that you know what we're looking at in terms of timeline, in terms of priorities, in terms of strategies, um, these are the meetings that are re relevant in the next two to three years. So obviously, at the firm forum, um, the first line, the second line is extra mechanism, the third line is human rights council, uh, the fourth is the general assembly third committee. And, and the ICB is it's tasked to ensure that and these people are keeping tabs or participating um, in all in throughout uh, in all this work in all these meetings. Like I said, uh, extra, me extra mechanism did just happen. So let let me kick off with the MRIP. So which was um, uh, this? Well, well, this is not my finger, uh, but that's the the MRIP. It is very important to note or to be aware of of the the sequence. So, uh, for example, the current form it's um, when it considers, for example, an as participation, it considered an as participation under item six uh, of its agenda, and its recommendations. Um, it will have form a basis for the third committee, uh, which happens in October. Similar with the extra mechanism. The extra mechanism under agenda item 11, it considered an ads participation and its recommendations on the topic will, uh, will form a basis for the uh, resolution on Indian peoples and human rights um, at the Human Rights Council, which will be um, negotiated in September. What we're looking at is that, um, so every time you want to influence Human Rights Council resolution on human rights and, uh, and rights of Indian peoples or the third committee resolution on Indigenous peoples, you would have to go, uh, you, it would be helpful that you go through the different forum as well as the actual mechanism. So that's what you do every year. So the same thing uh, is, um, is what the, um, uh, what the Indigenous coordinating body was, has been doing for this year. So what are the priorities for this expert mechanism session, a robust process? Because before at the, at the Human Rights Council, um, many meetings on and as participation were ad hoc, were standalone roundtable discussions that did not build up or culminate into a process or a, for example, a resolution on and as participation. Additionally, it's one of the main uh, points of uh, confusion amongst Indigenous peoples as well as member states is terminology. Um, for example, um, the enhanced participation process now referred, was referred to as um, enhanced participation of Indigenous people's representatives and institutions. That is confusing if you take into account that the basis of all this is ALTA, ALTA document, theme two, paragraph 10. So the priority was to focus on Indigenous people's representative institutions. The full and effective participation of Indigenous people throughout the process is equally important. And also, um, there was a desire to prevent the NS participation process from being a, a long process like the, the development of the UN Declaration, which took almost 30, 30 years. And next to the priorities are the considerations. Also, is that the working group like the draft uh, declaration uh, won't serve us. What we mean by that is that ideally, um, you would want to have a working group on, on NS participation so that you can um, yeah, under the, the umbrella of the Human Rights Council, Indigenous peoples and member states can scaffold towards the, this new status on based on four 
uh, particular topics. The challenge is, is that if, the, if a working group would be established under the Human Rights Council, um, one of the main challenges is that those that want to participate need to have ECOSOC status. Um, so that, or an NGO with ECOSOC status. So that would actually not serve the purpose of enhanced participation because the, in, it, in terms of enhanced participation, the status or the end goal is important, but the process towards it is equally important to ensure that these people's representative institutions can participate in, in matters that affect them, including um, yeah, the modalities and the, the technicalities of enhanced participation. Something else that we are aware of is that um, both Indigenous peoples as well as member states um, viewed the, the workshop that was held in November as something that was very positive. Uh, there was high level of engagement um, from Indigenous peoples as well as member states. And uh, even though it only, uh, was only for four days, um, they did see that there were some, um, yeah, some, some good conversation ongoing um, and that it was um, that it for both member states as well as the Indigenous peoples to be able to, um, yeah, to be able to go into the details, it would need more time. So the, um, so that is a positive thing. So if, if working group is not, is, is, will not serve it, then a workshop would, would definitely, uh, continuation of a workshop would, would be definitely be, be very, very good. Um, Something else that, that we were very aware of is the knowledge gaps, uh, which is huge. When we're, we're talking to states um, on, um, on, on enhanced participation, um, we had to walk them back. So not even enhanced participation, not even participation, but actually indigenous issues. So we had to build them back up again towards, um, yeah, towards and as participations, there's, there's a lot of knowledge gaps. So, for example, uh, one question that came up was, "Well, um, I'm not indigenous, so why should why should should I care?" Um, another one, another question was, um, uh, "Is was why should I ask instruction from capital on the the resolution on indigenous peoples and human rights?" So they're not even discussing enhanced participation yet. So um, the knowledge gaps is, is very clear and also very important that these are, are filled, uh, not only at the, at, the, at the Human Rights Council or GA level, but definitely at the capital level as well. And also that, uh, rem uh, that, that in these peoples will get resistance to a process. Um, there are um, a number of states out there that will, will show some fierce resistance to the process. And also, uh, finally, that, that there is a need to create pressure for, uh, for states to actually push for, for, for this process and engage into the, into the, um, into the consultations on NS participation. Uh, what the discussion has been um, in the margins of Emirate was how do we create pressure for states to, yeah, to participate in, in these consultations? So if you look at, the, um, at a workshop that, that was held in November as a positive thing, so why not create workshops on NS participation? And again, like I said, um, some states um, do not like uh, co um, having a process. So if you do a sequence of workshops, um, that actually walks, talks, and that will act like a process. So that was the, 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 the point of departure for, for the ICB going into the expert mechanism and to get a recommendation into the, um, yeah, into the text of the report of the EMRIP to ensure that a sequence of workshops would, would be held um, that would scaffold towards or work towards um, yeah, the NS, um, NS participation in the sense that we could have a a consultation process, as well as perhaps a standalone resolution on an expert participation at the Human Rights Council. So the expert mechanism the proposal would go into the Human Rights Council, and then the Human Rights Council um, would have make a recommendation based on the proposal uh, for a, the workshops on an expert participation that will be held for a period of time. Uh, the ICB has, has determined the best to 
have all these workshops to be done uh, before um, February 2025. And I'll explain in a little bit why this, this, this timeline is, is, is important. So this is the timeline that, 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 that we envision for the workshops. So let me zoom in on this timeline for the, for the workshops itself. So I mean, let me, for that, let me reverse engineer. For, so from, from, the, from the front to the back, so that we're, um, so we know that we're, um, what the sequence is. There would be four two-day sessions to be held in Geneva, um, allowing for the broadest participation of states as well as in these peoples. Um, on these four topics, venues of participation, participation modalities, accreditation mechanism, and accreditation criteria. The purpose of these workshops would be to inform the creation of a separate resolution. So these four workshops would culminate into a report and that report will be drafted with a view to create a separate resolution in September. These workshops will be held, uh, will be organized by the Office of High Commission on Human Rights. Similar to the, the workshop that was held in November. Um, why the Office of High Commission on Human Rights? The Office of High Commission on Human Rights can determine its own modalities for, uh, for, the, for, this, for these workshops meaning that indigenous peoples can participate in their own capacity. They do not need to require an NGO ECOSOC status. Um, in terms of facilitation, it, it will be facilitated by a states as well as a uh, indigenous um, people's representatives. That, that is quite possible. Um, so there's a lot of more flexibility under the auspices of OHHR than under the auspices or, or under the umbrella of the Human Rights Council. And like the November workshop, um, these, um, these sequence of workshops, the four two-day sessions would be organized in partnership with the ICB, uh, with the Indigenous Court of Anybody. So that those four workshops would, um, would be held and um, it is probably or hopefully outside of the regular Human Rights Council sessions because, or back to back to it, because uh, most of these experts already um, engage in these in the consultation on various resolutions, so they will not have the capacity. Quite a number of these states will not have the capacity to also cover a, um, yeah, a two-day session, whilst they also have to cover some resolutions on education or um, violence against women and girls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So do, that's the um, those are the workshops that will be held in Geneva. Going back before that, um, the idea is to have several regional workshops based on the November workshop format. So like the workshop that we were held in Geneva, um, in each of the social cultural regions of Indigenous peoples, a, a workshop will be held. Um, this would introduce states direct um, participation with Indigenous peoples. Um, this could be um, on indigenous issues as well as on and as participation. But the, the most important is, thing is to generate awareness and instructions from capital to the, their missions in Geneva as well as in New York for a substantial process on and as participation. Um, this could not be organized with OHHR because OHHR is too spread thin. Um, and if the OHHR wanted to do that, it would require a, a um, yeah, significant budget increase, which the Human Rights Council would never allow. Um, so this would have to be organized by states um, and or other entities like, uh, like um, universities, et cetera, et cetera, um, in partnership with, with, preferably with, with ICB. Before that, there was a request from several people that there's also like indigenous people's preparatory meetings before um, yeah, these regional meetings, as well as the, um, yeah, the, the meetings held in Geneva to build the capacity of Indigenous peoples and the representative institutions uh, to be able to engage in the, into this process. And the request was also to, that these um, yeah, preparatory meetings, they could be hybrid, they could be fully virtual or preferably in person uh, to be held reasonably in advance of the regional workshops so that Indigenous peoples have sufficient time to prepare for all this. Um, so the flow is like this. Uh, so the prep meetings go, will go into regionals and then go to Geneva. That is the, the sequence that has been, um, yeah, we've been, been looking for. And then obviously 
what is the timing? What is going to happen afterwards, after the workshops? The workshops all need to be concluded by February 2025. Why February 2025? So that the OHHR has sufficient time to compile a report as well as translate it so that it can be submitted to the June session of the Human Rights Council. So that's why I made that arrow and that, that red circle around it. It needs to be submitted to the Human Rights Council by June so that it becomes part of the UN system so that it can actually be used as a basis for the intergovernmental process in September um, when the standalone resolution is going to be negotiated. So in September 2025, you would have two resolutions on the table, the existing resolution on Indigenous Peoples and Human Rights, and you would have an additional resolution, uh, the standalone resolution on NS participation. The main reason is, reason why NS participation is not included or combined with the, the existing resolution is because we want, uh, first of all, those two things are very separate. And the second thing is, which is also very important, is that um, one should not be held hostage for the other, or some um, elements or paragraphs of the existing resolution should not be held hostage for an participation or vice versa. Um, so that's why uh, the, the standalone resolution is, is key, key in all this. Um, so the EMRA proposals. Um, the action mechanism has heard the under agenda agenda item eleven, um, the, uh, the the ICB the the inaugural ambassador of uh, indigenous ambassador of Australia, the um, ambassador of Denmark and the ambassador of Guatemala, as well as kind of there and some other states as well as indigenous peoples and has come and as well as ICB informally in the margins of MRIP as well and has provided the following proposals. And like I said, this is what we're looking at. So this MREP going to Human Rights Council. So we're looking at um, recommendations that will be uh, hopefully be adopted um, next month uh, during the Human Rights Council session. So this is paragraph number two of the, of the active mechanism uh, where it welcomes the, the um, yeah, the, the, um, the Human Rights Council to continue the work of, um, of NS participation. And the translation um, for that uh, would be the recommendation to welcome the report of the Office of Commissioner of the four-day extra workshop um, convened by the Office of Commissioner on possible ways to NS participation of these people in the work of the Human Rights Council. Um, and this, is, this particular paragraph is not like Come out of thin air is actually adapt, uh, adapted um, from OP12 of last year's uh, Indigenous Peoples and Human Rights Resolution. And the only thing that we've changed is to welcome the report. Um, before that, it said it looks forward to the report. Um, the other one is the extra mechanism takes note with appreciation of the work of the Indian coordinating body and proposed that the council encourages states and other public and or private donors to financially support the work of the Indian coordinating body. Um, I can already see in the chat as meant to some talk about financially support. And I think that is super, super important um, as, uh, as where we are at right now, as we are increasing actually the work and, and also the, yeah, the, financial needs are becoming very evident right now. So we've been able to, uh, to use the with one grant that has been provided by CERNAC, so that's from Canada, and we're trying to stretch it as much as possible. However, that is coming to an end. Um, so we're now in, this, in the second of the, the three-year grant. Um, so um, it is, uh, so this particular paragraph is super helpful for the ICB um, to, yeah, to seek uh, funding from particularly from states, as well as from private donors as well. Um, so the, uh, the recommendation that, that would go into the, um, into the Human Rights Council is to welcome the work of the Indian supporting body. And this is, and then as they would continue as follows. And this is also is an adaptation of um, the previous resolution on, um, 
uh, of Indigenous Peoples and Human Rights, uh, particularly paragraph, opposite paragraph number seven. Paragraph one of the um, EMRIC proposals is the EMRIC invites the Human Rights Council to continue to facilitate in consultation with Indigenous peoples, the participation of representative institutions of Indigenous peoples. And this is a, a very important change. So the EMRIC has endorsed the call from the ICB to, to refer to the process as uh, enhanced participation of Indigenous peoples representative institutions, no longer Indigenous peoples representatives and institutions. Um, and then continues it's with the participation of, any, of representative institutions of any peoples in the work of the council in accordance with the UN declaration and to commit to reducing the barriers such as language barriers for the participation of any peoples, et cetera, et cetera. But the first uh, yeah, element is, is, is very important that it uh, it's highlights the participation of representative institutions. Um, so that's one of the adaptations could be is that, um, which is still a, uh, a adaptation from previous resolution 518 slash 18 OP 13. So it decides to continue to discuss further steps and the main changes in these people's representative institutions. Um, that is a recommendation that the ICB is going to put forward at the, uh, at the next Human Rights Council session. Um, another uh, proposal from the MREP is, and this, this is where we go into like the process of it, into these workshops. So the expert mechanism invites the council to make the decision to convene four two-day expert workshops on the themes, venues of participation, participation modalities, accreditation criteria, and an accreditation mechanism to be concluded before February 2025. These workshops will focus on possible ways to enhance the participation of these people representing institutions in the work of the council with the participation of member states these peoples, their expert mechanisms, special rapporteur, and a print form on these issues, and invite written submissions. This is obviously important um, to outline the workshops, the the deadline, and as well to activate the um, yeah the 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 various mandate holders. So the the um, expert mechanism, special rapporteur, and a print form to be able to participate in their capacity as as in terms of with their with their mandate. Um, but this, uh, as well, is an adaptation from um, a um, previous Human Rights Council resolution, uh, forty-eight eleven, um, and um, and also OP six of the GA resolution seventy-one three uh, three hundred twenty-one, and so that um, yeah, we can continue to work in workshops, and again, like I said, the uh, participation of the uh, actual mechanism print form and a special picture will still need to be added, but I, I don't think that will be a major problem. Um, and then consistent with the recommendation of the expert workshop, expert mechanism encourages the council to appoint two co-chairs for each workshop. One should be nominated by member states and one by indigenous peoples to convene each of the four two-day expert workshops. And another, so that's paragraph four, paragraph five, and this will all be published in the, um, as soon as the EMRA report will be pub made public. And also as part of the preparatory process for the workshops, the mechanism invites the council to request the co-chairs to collaborate with the Indian coordinating body to organize the four two-day workshops, ensuring the participation from the seven Indian social culture regions and to pre prepare an informal record of each workshop and to request the co-chairs and the Office of High Commissioner to prepare a report on the four two-day workshops with a view to preparing a draft resolution on NS participation and to submit it to the council prior to its 59th session. So, and so these are all the elements that I outlined before and that would culminate into, um, into a, a recommendation that is written as follows, request the president of the Human Rights Council or representative thereof, and which is an adaptation of uh, resolution 4219 OP, OP 13, request the President of the Human Rights Council or Representative thereof to participate as co-chair of the workshop and calls upon the Indigenous peoples participating to nominate the co-chair for the workshops and request the co-chairs and the Office of High Commissioner to prepare a report on the workshops with a view to prepare a draft resolution on NS participation and to submit it to council prior to its 59th session. So far, having had discussions with, with some of the, the, for example, with the co-sponsor of the resolution, is that um, it might be possible that um, the, the state 
uh, co-chair would be um, would be different for each of the four workshops. Um, just to yeah to, to seek some um, yeah um, some interest from from other indigenous peoples or sorry from other states from other regions um, in, into into the process. Um, additionally, um, the one of the things that has like been a, a oversight, not an active decision, but an oversight error actually, is that from the November workshop that was held last year, a report was provide uh, was submitted to the um, to this June session, but there was no interactive dialogue uh, that followed up on it. So. Though this report was submitted to the Human Rights Council, um, there was no attention brought to it um, from, uh, from the H Human Rights Council to the member states. Um, so one of the things is uh, how to be able to remedy that, to get more attention to um, these workshops, is that um, uh, to the add some language at the final uh, and to submit it to the council prior to its 59th session and a comma um, to be followed by interactive dialogue. So this would, uh, at the 59th session as well. So this would actually draw, draw more attention to the, the work of the um, Indian peoples as well as member states in, the, in these workshops. And then there's a, obviously a uh, recommendation that Indian people will, that the ICB would like to see included um, advice member states as part of the preparatory process for the workshops to organize in collaboration with the ICB regional workshop in the seven Indigenous social cultural regions and to prepare a report of each workshop. Um, that is the loading, obviously, meaning that ideally uh, we would like to see a recommendation for that at the Human Rights Council resolution um, so that it can be used as leverage to talk to member states in the various regions to yeah, engage and also to um, commit to organizing a workshop, um, a regional workshop. And then the one final recommendation is, is that the expert mechanism proposed that the council suggests that the voluntary fund uh, facility participation in the workshop of several representative indigenous peoples, representative teachings from each of the social cultural regions in the expert workshop, uh, ensuring to the extent possible balanced regional and gender representation. And these, this recommendation would be an, an adaptation of uh, doo -doo -doo, um, Resolution 48 slash 11, OP 17, and the main difference is to change um, institutions to include representative institutions um, so that there's all, yeah, more and more in these people's representative institutions to be included into the work of these workshops. So um, very wordy, I apologize for that, but that is, uh, that is what we're looking for in terms of the upcoming Human Rights Council session. Um, use leveraging the Emory proposals, which are very workable, um, and um, using them and to adapt some existing language from previous uh, paragraphs, improve them so that they can include it into the um, upcoming um, Numerous Council resolution. My friends, you can now also listen to the Gomuluka podcast on Spotify. Listen while you use other apps or do other things. If you don't have Spotify, just open your Apple or Google podcast or your favorite podcasting app and search for the Gomuluku podcast.